Right now, there are over 5 million birds leaving Australian shores. Every year these birds, some barely bigger than a sparrow, embark on an epic 13,000 kilometre flight to the Arctic. That's the equivalent of doing 309 consecutive marathons with only one or two drink stations along the way. And what's more, once they have nested and raised their young, they turn around and do it all again. For weeks they have been gathering. From around the country they have come. And now the congregation is getting edgy, waiting for the perfect weather conditions to take off. Welcome to the third instalment of Farewell Shorebirds. I'm Sean Dooley from BirdLife Australia, coming to you from the Melbourne Water Edith Vale Seaford Education Centre, or as we like to call it, the Farewell Shorebirds Hub where we've been getting a lot of reports of shorebirds on the move right across Australia, including this very exciting report of a great knot that was seen in Broome last week and five days later turned up in China. And in news just to hand, the Victorian Wader Studies Group working in Roebuck Bay in Western Australia have put a number of satellite trackers on some little curlews and we're going to follow their journey over the next couple of weeks. Now you might remember last week we sent BirdLife Australia's intrepid reporter Steve Davidson out into the field to Werribee Sewage Farm to report on the shorebird movements. Unfortunately Steve let us down somewhat because he couldn't actually find any shorebirds, most of them had already migrated. So this week we've sent Steve up to the Hunter Estuary in New South Wales. Steve, can you tell us how's the shorebird action yeah, in the well, Hunter? There's not much around actually, Sean. Okay. Uh, I spoke to Mick Roderick and he told me everything left last Monday. Okay. Fortunately though, we have more reliable methods of tracking the shorebirds than relying on Steve Davidson's reports. And these include banding the birds, colour banding them, attaching leg flags, geolocators and radio transmitters that can be tracked by satellite. Here to tell us more about the work that goes on is shorebird guru Clive Minton. When we catch them, we put a metal band on the bird's leg that's got a unique number on it. Generate much more data by putting coloured flags on the bird's leg. So we put here in Victoria, orange. Uh, we put yellow on a broom in northwest Australia, green on in Queensland. Now that means if someone in Tokyo Bay sees a curlew with a green flag on, they don't know which bird it is, but they do know that that has come from Morton Bay near Brisbane. And these geolocators and satellite transmitters are enabling you not just to base your knowledge on data of the one in uh, 30 that might be seen again or the one in 100 that might be recovered again, but on every single bird, every single day. The Broome region is regarded as the most significant site in Australia for shorebirds. Roebuck Bay has the greatest diversity of shorebird species of any site on the planet, which is one of the reasons why BirdLife Australia established the Broome Bird Observatory. Not only is it a fantastic place to go bird watching, but researchers like Clive and his team use it as a base for their studies. Another great site for shorebirds is Morton Bay in Queensland, and here to fill us in on more about that site is Richard Fuller from the University of Queensland. So here behind me are the uh, tidal flats of Moreton Bay, one of the most important sites for shorebirds in this country. About 50,000 shorebirds come to this uh, to Moreton Bay here and they feed, they spend the whole summer uh, feeding on invertebrates in the mud. To them, the mud behind me is a, literally a fast food joint where they can refuel uh, and spend the summer. So here we are on the tidal flats. This mud may look lifeless, but it's actually full of invertebrates that are feeding on the nutrients that are uh, inside this mud, uh, such as this ragworm here that burrow down into the mud. The shorebirds love eating these guys, and invertebrates like these ragworms pack a real punch in terms of energy. This really helps the shorebirds gain weight uh, and get themselves into good condition. It's hard to get your head around exactly how far these shorebirds can travel. So here to help us out is shorebird expert from the Arthur Ryler Institute in Victoria, Danny Rogers. Bar-tailed godwit. Oh, well, the bar-tailed godwit is special in that it's uh, the world champion long-haul flyer. It flies a longer distance without stopping for a rest than any bird, any animal in the world. 
the record was set by a Vartale Godwet that was, had a satellite tag placed it on, on it in New Zealand. It migrate, migrated to Alaska, that's stopping on the way, that's all right, we knew they did that. And then on the way back, it set off from the southwest coast of Alaska and just flew all the way across the Pacific Ocean direct to New Zealand. No stops, eight days of continuous flapping, landed at the other end. Nobody knew birds or any other organism could do anything like that. Farewell Shorebirds is very fortunate that Brian Dorr has been able to track down an actual bar-tailed godwit to tell its story in its own words. Okay, we're delighted to have a bar-tailed godwit with us today. You are a bar-tailed godwit. I'm a bar-tailed godwit, godwit. yes. Good evening. Thank you for joining us tonight. We my appreciate pleasure. it. No, you You're must be Brian. I am Brian, yeah, yes, I am. Good. Your migration pattern, I have to say, is fascinating. Well, it's bloody exhausting, Brian, I if bet that's it any is. comfort to you. <laughs> I'm glad you find it interesting. Mm. Tell me how it works. Now, mm. you breed in the Northern Hemisphere, don't you? We breed in the Northern mm. Hemisphere, yes, Brian. Uh, in Alaska, in my case, we're a shoreline bird, so sure. we breed along the Arctic shoreline. And where do you go from there? Well, last year, Brian, I went from there to New Zealand. And where did you go on the way to New Zealand? Well, if you imagine a line, Brian, directly from Alaska to New Zealand, yeah. I went there. And, and didn't you stop on the way? No. Well, that's incredible. No, I stopped when I got to New Zealand, Brian. Big I rest, had a big I rest when I got to New Zealand. Have you ever been to New Zealand? Oh, I have. Yes. Absolutely beautiful, 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 place. beautiful place. Oh, boy, did I, I stop mean, there. Did you stop on the way at all? No. No? No, I no. didn't stop on the way. But pin your ears back? Just and... pin your ears back and go for the doctor. And how long did it take? Nine days, Brian. Nine oh, days. Nine days without stopping. I yeah. mean, that is amazing. Well, that was a PB, Brian. That, and that, then that you came to Australia from New I Zealand. I did. I've got relatives wow. here, so I ducked across. That's just a bit of a light fly, Brian. Just that's a small job, 1,200 really. uh, miles. That, that's uh, nothing. No. And uh, you're about to do it again, aren't you? Yeah, we are. That's why I've bulked up a bit, Brian. I'm uh, stacked on a bit of condition. Yeah, but, uh, but you'll fly that off. I'll fly that off, yes, yes. Pretty, pretty easily, Brian. A useful tip, actually, for anyone mm -hmm. out there. If you have stacked on some condition, yeah, get out, get some exercise. Fly for nine days without stopping. Fly for nine days, Terrific. then breed, then fossick about in the tundra looking for something to eat and then come back. And fly to New Zealand. Worked for me. Terrific. Look, thank you very much for joining us. I know you've got to go. Yeah, thank you very much. Coming now. That's about all we've got time for. Tune in next week where we will be heading to the Yellow Sea to check on the shorebirds' progress. And in the meantime, if you've spotted migratory shorebirds in your area, then why not share it with us on Facebook or Twitter with the hashtag Farewell Shorebirds. And you can always check out the website for more information. Until next time, see you later.